Hey everybody, it's April. Today I want to talk about why you should make yourself uncomfortable. So I'm going to start on forearms and switch around and then we, um, and we'll hold for five minutes. You don't have to hold for five minutes. That's just what I like to do. Okay, so I'm going to start on forearms and you can start on hands if you like. If you're starting on forearms, wrap your hands around your biceps so you know you have your right distance between your arms. You can interlace fingers if you like. It does make it a little easier to do that. Pull your shoulders down your back, then lift your upper back, lift your chest, pull in your belly, come up on your toes, shift your weight forward slightly. The timer has begun, but don't think you're already in your plank and you don't need to do anything else with it. So I always, after I'm in my plank, I do every, all of that again. I'm pressing into the floor again, separating my shoulders. So you think about broadening your upper back, pull in your belly, tighten up your glutes, press your heels back, make sure you have a nice long line. We are already almost at 30 seconds. There we are, 30 seconds. And see, that didn't seem like anything, did it? The time just flew by. <laughs> so again, it's very important to either have someone watching you while you're planking, make sure your plank form is good, or have your camera on. You don't have to record yourself, but have your camera on so you can see what your plank looks like. If it feels easy, you're probably doing it wrong. <laughs> if you feel relaxed and feel like you're hanging out, you're probably doing it wrong. We're at one minute, so I'm gonna to switch to my hands. You don't have to switch. You can stay however you like. But remember when you do switch, ah, do all that again. <laughs> Pressing into the floor, pulling in your belly, reaching your tailbone toward your heels. So you've got it going on. So this may be uncomfortable for you. You know what? It's, it's even uncomfortable for me, even though I do it almost every day. But that's okay, because the more you do it, you will start to feel less discomfort while you're doing these things. And you have to have a little bit of feeling uncomfortable in order to get out of your comfort zone. Because chances are, if you're in your comfort zone, you're not doing something you should be doing. You're not challenging yourself in some aspect of your life, whether it's planking or going to the gym or um, just walking, running, whatever it is you need to be doing. Two minutes, I'm gonna switch to my forearms and I'm gonna lift a leg. You have to get out of your comfort zone. And you know, there's that saying, no pain, no gain. Really what you need to think about is no discomfort, no gain. <laughs> Because if all you're doing is staying in your comfort zone, you're not going to grow. You're not going to challenge yourself. And that's how you advance is by challenging yourself, having a little bit of discomfort. And you know, so what? Ooh, hoo, hoo. You know, oh, it's hard holding my plank for very long and my arms might shake. So what? <laughs> that's how you get stronger and you get better at doing these things. And, you know, I've always said plank gets easier the more you do it. And it's true, it will, because you're going to get stronger. That's, that's how, what's going to happen. But you have to get out of that comfort zone. And like I said, it's really easy to go, oh, maybe you are working out, but you haven't done anything different. I'm switching to side plank. Maybe you haven't increased your distance in a long time and you really need to. And so you're comfortable with your walking or running or whatever you're doing, but by getting out of your comfort zone, you're going to see more growth. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, we have the yoga challenge where you try to do 40 classes in 60 days. It gets you out of that comfort zone of maybe you've been going once or twice a week and you feel like that's pretty good. And that is good. I'm not poo-pooing it by any means, but Forcing yourself to get out of your comfort zone lets you see that you can practice a little bit more and that you're going to notice a huge difference in your body and the way you feel and the way you think and maybe even the way you look. And that's all important. That It all comes from getting out of your comfort zone. Four minutes. I'm coming back to my hands. This is how I'm going to finish. So you have to think about that. Even with our children, you know, sometimes we want to keep them from feeling discomfort. And, you know, that's where you have to look at what is the discomfort? Is it something that's going to help you grow? 
Or is it something that's painful right now, physically painful that you just can't do? Then obviously you don't do it. But it is important to keep challenging yourself, 430, and to grow and to get out of that comfort zone. So sometimes if you're at the gym and you feel like, oh, I can't do any more reps, uh, <laughs> Well, do do some more. Get out of that comfort zone. Or you've been, like I said, you've been walking for two miles every day for a while, and you had to work up to that. At see if you can make it two and a half miles. Add a little discomfort. It's okay. It's not going to kill you. Five minutes. Actually, it's going to help you grow, and it's going to make you stronger. It's going to help you work through problems and there are just so many good things about it that you deprive yourself if you deprive yourself discomfort okay go do something that's uncomfortable today <laughs> have a great day